You guys, can we take a moment to appreciate the precision and perfection in these little chopped up turkey thigh cubes? Hey guys, I'm Jasmine and today I am making a pretty impromptu video as I am preparing puppy's next batch of food. So you'll see my juicy hand and maybe it'll be a little bit of ASMR because you'll be hearing this chopping throughout the video. Now today's video specifically is about why it is always important to have a bone substitution on hand even if you usually typically grind up the bones yourself. I do have a couple of different videos about bone as well as a page on the website catladyfitness.com explaining the different bone substitutions you can use if you don't have a high power blender in order to grind up the bones yourself but i thought this was an important video to make just due to something that happened recently when making puppies food even though i've been doing it a while and i've done pretty thorough research unexpected things still sometimes come up but i see it as some somewhat beneficial because I do have this platform with you guys and basically it just gives me a chance to continue teaching these lessons if you will and making you aware of things so that you guys can kind of learn from my challenges and misfortunes I guess you can say by the way if you are new to this channel this isn't the typical uh form here I'm actually recording this from my iPad which I don't think I have ever done but if you're into cat stuff and especially things involving raw cat food or kitty nutrition or even kitty care or if you're into human things then make sure to click that subscribe button below as well as the little bell icon right next to it because we do put out a new video every catter day. All right guys, before I get into why it's important to have a bone substitution on hand if you make raw homemade cat food, I have a couple little announcements and updates, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to go ahead and share them. First one is we finally have a mailing address for those of you who have written me and puppy and asked about if we have a place where you can send stuff we do and i'm going to leave it in the description below and you can also find it on the about tab of this channel we may even have some videos in the future opening mail from you guys so there's that in addition to that i have had a lot of people asking for an update on my mole if you have not been around here for a while a long time ago I put out a video on how to remove a mole using apple cider vinegar. It's a very thorough video, step by step, and I took you guys through it. And that video has actually become pretty popular and I'm getting a lot of questions for an update. Did it grow back? What's going on with the mole? So when this video goes up, I'm also going to post a picture on the community tab of the current mole situation. But spoiler, it's exactly the same as it was at the end of that video. And again, I don't know how loud this chopping is that I'm doing, but you guys are probably gonna ask, so let me just explain um, what today's batch is about. We have some London broil beef. They chopped it up kind of big for me. Um, I asked for a very specifically little cube sizes about the size of dice which is the best way to describe it because they never do them that small and having them chop it up at the store for me really saves a lot of time but I still go through it so this is an important tip too that I, I didn't plan on um, sharing but even if they chop up the stuff for you like I showed in the beginning of the video which oh my gosh that made me so happy they've never done that good of a job so thank you sir I didn't catch your name but you need a tip jar but even if they pre-chop it you know, and do all of that for you, it's still super important to go through it as you are putting it in the big bowl and in your mixture. Not only could they have left big chunks, but sometimes the chunks they chop up contain pieces of bone and things in them. So you always just wanna kinda get through it with your fingers, maybe cut pieces smaller than they had cut them, which I definitely have to do with these big chunks of beef. But you never just wanna take the whole entire carton and just open it up and dump it in there because you just it's better to be safe than sorry. And yeah, you know, 
they've saved you a lot of time by doing the cutting, but you still have to take some time and go through it with your fingers. And if you guys have been here for a minute, then you know shortly after my first how to make raw cat food video where I had them grind it up at the store for me, I stopped doing that and I actually prefer it and puppy prefers it in chunks because it allows him the chance to gnaw on his food and chew on his food, which is not only good for his jaw, but it's also very, very good for his teeth and for his dental health. But in the blender, I still grind up all of the hearts and the livers and some water to help get it going. And usually the chicken thigh bone, which let me get into why it is important to have that substitution. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I am using, um, this batch is the London Broil. I think it's gonna end up being about six pounds of London Broil and four, about four pounds of turkey thighs, which basically is a double batch. So reason number one why you should always have a bone substitution on hand, even if you have a reliable high-speed blender, mine's over there, that's why I just peeked at it, is because you never know when the power is gonna go out as you're grinding your food. Just It's just things, things happen. So this happened a long, 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 long time ago. I was grinding up the, it was chicken thigh bone. I was grinding up the chicken thigh bone, but it was raining outside and the power went out. And I remember I gave it like a good, 10, 15 minutes and it was hurricane season in Florida and it wasn't crazy outside, but it's just like, you never know. So basically I was like, you know what? It's ground up enough. Long story short, it was not. And that whole batch of food that I made him ended up having really small shards. Another tip for you, I, I have a feeling this video is gonna be full of tips, so I hope you guys watch it even though the title suggests it's about just like one thing. This is what I get for not really scripting it and just talking to you. But a good tip, I don't care how much it grosses you out. This grosses me out, I don't eat beef. Like I, <laughs> this is totally, just for my cat because I think he's pretty cool and I want him to live a, a long time. But you need to stick your fingers in your cat's food when you put it on the plate. I promise you, you will not be able to visually see these potentially hazardous shards of bone if they are not ground up well enough. But yeah, back then when this happened, I mixed all of the food up, I made him that full batch, it was just the chicken thighs, and I noticed he was he was oddly hesitant to eat it. It was all, I knew it was good quality, I made it as soon as I get home, I got the freshest stuff possible. He hadn't turned away his food yet. I picked up the plate after like two or three meals that I noticed he was kind of being weird about it, and I felt so bad because I found I could feel all of these shards, some of them bigger, some of them super duper tiny, but for the rest of that batch, every time I gave him his breakfast or his dinner, I would have to do this and go through it with my fingers, and it took a good 15 minutes at least to go through it because I would go through it, pick some things out, and then I would stop for a few minutes or step away for a second, wash my hands, come back, I would, and every single time I would put my fingers through it again, after I thought I'd gotten everything, there'd be at least a couple more that could potentially really harm your cat if they are to swallow unground chicken bone. This is why you really need to check the first time you use your blender, whatever it is, if you're grinding your bone up at home, to ensure that it grinds up that chicken bone fine enough to where it isn't hazardous to your cat if they eat it. I mean, think about it in this way. Have you ever eaten a potato chip or like a tortilla chip and it just scratches your neck all the way down to your stomach and you can feel it? Oh my gosh, that's the worst. And you guys, that's, that's a potato chip. That is a carbohydrate that softens and gushes up really quickly due to the enzymes in your system. Well now, just imagine that it is bone. It is something made of calcium and cartilage and something that does not degrade like a potato chip would and your poor cat is so hungry and they're eating their food and just sometimes gulping their food and yes that's even if it's raw and uncooked because you guys hopefully know by now you never ever want to give your pets cooked bone. That's 
when it gets even more hazardous because that's when it gets really sharp and dry. At least the raw bone has some moisture to it. Now that said, even when it's raw, when it's in these little shards, if the my Vitamix, for example, chopped it up pretty efficiently, but something happens where it doesn't finish the job and I didn't feel in the mixture for it, I just kind of looked and said, Man, it looks done, it looks like times before, but it wasn't and those little shards, they can be sharp like little daggers so that's something that you can't really predict is going to happen whoever predicts that their power is going to go out in the middle of making raw cat food and grinding up bones so this is the one that I have on hand and that I recommend to you guys the thing about MCHA the thing about anything from New Zealand, which this is, is New Zealand has some of the best regulations when it comes to anything having to do with agriculture or food. So this is actually ground up raw bone from the highly regulated cows of New Zealand. It comes in little capsules that you can open up and pour just like the vitamin B complex. And humans can even take it too. This is probably some of the best bioavailable calcium that a lot of people see very good results from if you're deficient in it if you just want to potentially benefit your joints or whatever else you may need it for this is really good stuff and just one of the differences between this and bone meal is bone meal is ground up cooked bone so just knowing that much right there and the fact that bone meal can come yeah from the united states or other areas of the world this stuff really is the best and so if you can't give your cat some real raw ground up bone from the thighs that you're using i highly suggest using this that said another time that i suggest using this mcha instead of bone is if you aren't using chicken in your recipe but you are just using stuff like the beef or turkey or anything besides chicken thighs turkey bone is pretty big this is a turkey thigh bone. I'm not gonna use it in this recipe, and that's my next suggestion. If you are not using the chicken thighs, I suggest against using, for example, the turkey bone. One, because you can measure more accurately, and two, because turkey bone, as you saw, is comparatively quite large compared to a chicken bone. Okay, puppy needs a little bite. He's been waiting quite a bit. You want a piece? Say, say hello to the people. Oh, we just get a slow blink. He's not going to meow for you. Come bye. I would move the iPad so you can see how cute he looks, but I don't want to get it full of meat juice. So it's a good idea to use the MCHA instead of basically anything except for chicken thighs, especially if you haven't tested your blender out. And plus, you guys, it's super easy. I actually, whenever I do use the MCHA, I don't add it into the food mix directly. It's so much easier just to give him a full capsule a day. So, and he gets two meals a day. So I basically just open up the capsule. I put half of it into his breakfast meal and stir it up in there. And then I put the other half in his night meal. And it's a lot easier that way. And it's really a pretty precise way to make sure that he's getting the right amount. And you guys, I'm sorry. I don't know how long this is. This probably would have been a more auspicious as as a live stream but let me share with you guys the recent events that prompted me to make this somewhat impromptu video so like many of you i lead a busy life i like to stay productive i'm very organized good with time management but sometimes you know what stuff happens and it is sometimes nine o'clock at night ten o'clock at night midnight and that's the time that i have to sit down and make puppy his food. You guys know how important it is to make the food the same day you buy everything. That is a lesson that I have learned that is very, very important to ensure it is as fresh as it can be. And I adhere to that, even if it means making him food at midnight. So that's exactly what happened. My kitchen, specifically the wall with my Vitamix, happens to be right against my neighbor's wall. And it happens to be a wall that is pretty thin. Long story short, listen, I made his food. It was midnight, way past my typical bedtime. You guys know I get up to watch the sunrise 
every day that I can, which is fairly early. But I'd finished doing this step and chopping up his chunky chunks, and it was time to grind up the bones. For you guys that don't have a blender and that haven't ground up bones before, or if you haven't seen my video showing you about the process of how easy it is to grind up bones in your Vitamix, it literally sounds like a plane is taking off or like some kind of jet is revving up their jet engine to just like explode. And basically it was another case of not grinding them down enough. I felt bad and rude because the neighbor was probably in bed wondering what kind of aviation tests I was doing next door. And the next day he did that thing where he started eating it, but then kind of backed away and did the scratching around his plate. And that's when I knew I did not grind up the bone enough. So I'm gonna put in a video clip and show you guys of what I had to do for every single meal, this entire batch, just because I didn't grind up the bones enough. If they were chicken thigh bones, I think it would have been successful because again, the chicken thigh bones are smaller. They are easily broken apart compared to the big old turkey thighs. But I had to press my fingers around in his food and pull out some pretty scary looking little shards, but then some ones you could not even see with the naked eye and just had to feel for. I know, was it scary? And again, it took like 15 minutes at least per meal. And I felt so bad. So I guess <laughs> the gist from this video, always have your bone substitution, preferably this one's super high quality, on hand. Even if you have a high power Vitamix, definitely if you don't use chicken thighs, you never know when the power is gonna go out in the middle of your batch making. You never know when a time is just going to happen to where you are making your food at midnight and your crazy loud blender might wake up the neighbors and you're actually considerate of that. This is like homemade raw cat food, real life perspectives. And believe you me, a vet bill for some kind of obstruction or internal injury being caused due to a sharp bone shard will end up being much more expensive than a few of these bottles will ever be. All right, guys, I hope you found this video uh, interesting or helpful. I know it was kind of a different style, kind of more of a conversation. The truth is this process isn't static. Things might come up, things might not be available, even if you have a solid system going like we do. All right, guys, if you liked this video, then please give it a juicy thumbs up by clicking the thumbs up below. And remember to click that subscribe button as well as a little bell icon right next to it so that you get notified whenever new videos go up. Also remember to check out the community tab where I post updates throughout the week and if you're interested in the mole update, that's where that will be. Oh, I almost forgot about the meow out of the week. That is going to go to Greater J. Thank you so much for always engaging in the comments and just being so supportive and so friendly. I truly greatly appreciate it, as does Puppy. If you would like to be our next meow out of the week, then just make sure you have subscribed and leave me a comment below sharing your thoughts on this video, if you liked it, if you wanna live stream, or even if you've ever had a bone scare with your cat. All right, you guys, it would be pretty unsanitary for me to grab Puppy right now for his usual end of video cameo. So after I clean up, I'll record something and insert it here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this obviously unprepared video and we will see you next week. Bye.